Hello gamers, welcome to TSI Times video. Hi gamers, this is Just the Tyrant speaking here. I've just returned from a Fauna Schools event at Warhammer World in Nottingham. Um, and this is just another review of how I did. Hi gamers, welcome to TSI Times video. And well, I've just got back from Warhammer World a few days ago and I was there attending a Fauna Schools event, um, single player event. This time, apart from doubles, unlike the last time, and it was a hundred power level, so it was power level this one and not points, which was interesting. Um, and it was really, really good. Um, me, Martin, and Graham went down. I took my Adeptus Mechanicus, Graham took Orcs, and Martin took Corn Army, um, Corn Demons with a little backup from some Chaos Space Marines. Um, and anyway, yeah, it was really, really good. Um, we drove down on Friday afternoon, had a game on one of the beautiful tables of Warhammer World. Um, really good game. We had Chaos versus um, Graham's Primaris Marines. Really, really good game. Um, then we had some cracking food in Bugman's. Lovely mixed grill. Absolutely cracking. Highly recommend that. And then I was very lucky to meet the guys from Tabletop Tactics. They're filming a battle report at One World, um, and they're very lovely, lovely chaps. Really, really good. Managed to chat to them for five minutes or so. Even got a photo, it's going to come up now. Yep, that's me looking gormous. Um, really, absolutely lovely chaps, Lawrence and the Stig. Um, five minutes, Lawrence is telling me about plans for his. Uh, World Eaters Army, which sounds good, but absolutely cracking. Made my made my weekend that to be honest. That was really, really good seeing those guys. So anyway, apart from me being a fanboy there, um, yeah, we stayed at a, we didn't stay at our usual hotel this weekend. We stayed at um, the Highlands Better Breakfast in Nottingham. Um, highly recommend it if you're going down. I think it cost um, about 75 quid for two of us to share a room, so 150 quid for a weekend. And you got your breakfast thrown in as well. Full English breakfasts, absolutely cracking. Um, very, very, yeah, highly recommend it. Highlands Hotel, bed and breakfast in Nottingham. It's about five minute drive from Nottingham, from One World, and it's a nice, straight, simple drive as well. Really, really good. Um, so that's where we stayed. And, but anyway, let's go to the games, eh? Um, actually, we'll look at the army I took. And I know this is just me rambling, I'm sorry, I don't have a script, I'm just talking off the top of my head here. So if I ramble, I go from one thing go to the other, please forgive me. Um, I'm just talking here. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is in bed, so I've got to be fairly quiet. And I'm trying to keep my enthusiasm down here, but shh, can't wake the kids up. Anyway, so I'll look, let's look at the army I took. Um, I've went for Mars Dogma mainly because I want to use the Wrath of Mars um, strategy. Um, it's done me well in practice games and I wanted to try it for these. Oh, well, I didn't want to try it, I wanted to try it at the tournament. So, anyway, my two characters I've got Tech Priest Dominus Archimedes, um, Volkite Blaster, and Marco Stubber, and he's stock. And then I have my Tech Priest Engineer. And he is armed with the Red Axe of Mars. He's my Warlord and he's got Prime Heaven's Gun, which is we roll all hits um, for close combat within six inches of him for infantry units. Which you'll see why anyway in a second. Um, for my troops, I have a squad of Rangers with two of the sniper rifles. I can never pronounce it, so I'm not going to even try. Um, and the Ominous Scope on the Alpha because he makes unit ignore cover. Very useful for both sniper rifles. Um, my second troops choice is a unit of rangers with two plasma guns and an arc pistol on the alpha there. I w if it wasn't power level, I wouldn't have a force weapons on them, but it's power level, so I'm gonna force as many guns in as I can get in a squad. Anyway, so they're my two screening units. Basically, not for spam, best screen my army. My third troops choice is unit destroyers with 
uh, heavy grab cannons and Cognis flivers because it's I think it's the best loadout. Um, they provide a bit of um, heavy hitting power to my army. And the tough as well. Um, okay then. So after that, we'll go on to my elite's choices. And my first one is a unit of 10 infiltrators with Fletcher Blasters and Taser Guards. And this is where the Wrath of Mars stratagem is going to come in. Because Wrath of Mars stratagem, in case you don't know, is you play it on a unit and then it gets to shoot. And then you shooting. And any sixes to wound cause an additional mortal wound. And these guys have five shots each. So in a squad of 10, that's 50 shots hitting on threes. I then use the um, Skatari stratagem to give them plus one hit. And this combined with canticles or three rolling ones generally means I'm hitting 50 times, which on average, that's about seven or eight mortal wounds coming in, in addition, which can wipe out a squad in a turn. If a turn will come up, we can hopefully wipe out a squad. Um, so that's one elite, and my second elite is a squad of 10 Electoral Priests for ones with staves, and I'm not going to pronounce it because I can't. <laughs> um, and they're going to bear the bodyguard to my Warlord, the Engineer, and with his rewards to hit for all infantry within six, it means they're going to absolutely, they should absolutely destroy anything they get in combat with. Um, hit on threes with rewards, strength five, any sixes to wound are d3 model wounds so they can really hurt stuff okay i then took four castellan robots with fists and flamers as a heavy choice um very tough they hurt big things in combat and they can hurt little things in shooting with the flamers um bah, basically yeah but not the tanks well six wounds two to seven two plus save takes a lot to kill them and my last choice is the logical solution, my Knight Crusader with his double shot battle cannon, Avenger Gatling cannon, he's got Melter Gun, he's got the Icarus Array art cannons on top and he's just a walking army in himself and he's my fire support, he's the one that's going to be doing a lot of damage from um, on the other side of the battlefield. And basically the idea of this army and in my, I've had a lot of uh, trial games with uh, my friends is I let the enemy come I shoot them I root, like wilt them down a bit once the enemy gets close the robot and the tech priests um, the engine seers not the engine seers sorry the electro priests and my counter punch they'll charge through and destroy whatever's gotten left in combat um, and that's the idea of it and it works really well against aggressive armies However, against other armies, well, let's just say this weekend, I found out it doesn't work that well against. So let's go on to the games. So Saturday morning and registered, um, got into the hall and set up on the table playing. And the first mission is Supply Drop, which is one of the... Uh, Eternal War missions from Chapter Proved. Six objectives. At the end of turn, turn, at the start of turn three, you pick three and two to spear, and the opponent does the same, and you've basically got two two objectives left, and those are the ones that are going to win the game. Um, and I was playing a gentleman called Biggs, and he had an Imperial Fist Army, um, Primaris Marines, and it was really, really nicely painted. And he was an absolutely cracking guy, really funny, really friendly, spot on to play. Um, his army had two units of intercessors the basic standard ones with the long range bolt rifles um, he had a unit 10 hell blasters a unit 5 hell blasters a redemptor dreadnought and two interceptors with the jump pack ones with plasma guns on the hands um, for characters he had a captain who he upgraded chapter master with command points a standard bearer with the relic to make the guy shoot when we got killed on three plus, a lieutenant, a librarian, and an apocryphal. And his strategy that was really good, I'd never seen it before. 
um, probably standard strategy for this army, but I've never seen before. Be two units of intercessors, held objectives at the back, and then, oh, you also had another unit of ten intercessors as well to bulk it up. Um, sorry. So, yeah, so rest of the force basically formed up in a fist and came straight towards my lines. And I, every mod I shot, because I was trying to kill, kill the Hellblasters, would then, on a free plus, get back up and shoot me again before I died. So he had no fear about overcharging because he wanted to do it. Um, he had the stratagem in plate ready to use. If I deep stuck my infiltrators near him, he would just turn around and shot them, then would have shot them again when I killed them, and the bag would be wiped out. So I had to use my intercessors to go after his one of the little squads. So they're out of the game. And this squad just came, this big fist of Imperial fists came marching across the board. Um, I like to say I fought well. But in this game, my luck was, was terrible. And <laughs> we joked about changing dice rolls. It was bad. Changing dice because it was that bad. Um, for example, one of my battle cannon on the knight, I did nine runes on his Hellblast squad first turn. Five, six saves, he made seven of them. And that was pissed. The it continued. Um, but it was a really good strategy. I'm not taking anything away from Biggs. It was a really good strategy he had. It was a really tough army. Uh, my robots, I had to charge my robots forward, they just got um, null zoned by the librarian, which just took me by surprise, I just I forgot about it to be honest. And once the bear 4 plus invulnerable save had gone, they got wiped out. And after that it was just a case of mopping my army up. I think he wiped me completely out um, by turn 4, so clear victory for him, really good game, absolute spot and blow. And he had some beautiful objectives, which hopefully I'm going to show now. And if you can work out the how these are countered, drop a comment because I thought these were absolutely beautiful and really, really good. So I went to game two and I took on Matt and his Custodes army and it was beautiful. It was all on back jet bikes. We had, I think, three squads off the jet bike squads and six shield captains. There was a lot of them. Um, and it was beautiful. He told me he used this special um, spray, gold spray, which made it look as if it changed colours every angle he got it on. It was absolutely brilliant. He has a Instagram account and he does commissions and it's tabletop ready. So I'm going to try and find a link. If not, please just go and have ch check him out. Tabletop ready. Um, really, really good. Beautiful army. And this was a... Um, Sealed Orders um, game, um, Millstone game, it's from Chapter Approved, where you get six objectives at the start of, going, get there, at the start of your, for turn one, and you can't get rid of them until you get rid of them all, until you get them all, or you use a command point to get rid of three. First turn, I managed to get a few, I used a command point, got rid of the rest, and then after that, I, didn't, I drew five cards, and I never got rid of them. I think I got two, I managed to get two and he was able to get two full turns where he got all of his objective cards, all his millstone mission points. Because his army was faster, his bags could be everywhere. It was really, really good. They hit hard, and they absolutely destroyed my um, infantry, but they struggled against my robots. Um, they eventually killed them, but my robots really hurt some of the shield captains um, and damaged them up. And the knight that could do nothing against the knight, the knight was blowing away units every time he could shoot. And see him, he was, he was killing stuff really, really good. And in the end of the game, he managed to wipe out everything in my army, apart from my knights and my priests. And he had one shield captain, his warlord, on one wound, who was hiding behind the forest. Um, because he didn't want to get shot by the knight, and he was trying to get away from the priests. If the game continued, he would still won, because he was about 10 points clear in points. But the game continued to last her to turn seven. I would have been able to kill him and at least got a bit of honour back from that. But it didn't. And it was a really cracking game. Matt was a great opponent. His army was beautiful. And it was... i never played Custodes. Custodes? Custodes? i never played them before anyway. And it was really interesting to play. They're a beautiful army. I'd highly recommend them. So anybody who wants to go and play them, go and get them. They're beautiful. They're tough and they're hard and they're fast. But they do die. And... That's what cool, but yeah, heroes, each model is a hero, but 
they can't win the game by themselves. That makes sense. They will die eventually to shots and will get swarmed by hordes. But just, it's really interesting army. Highly recommend them. So anyway, so at the moment I'm down two losses for two games. And then we go on to turn three. Not turn three. Then we go on to game three. Okay, on to game three. And we're playing Frontline Assault from Chapter Proved again. And this is an Eternal War mission. Um, they have one objective in each of the deployment zones and two objectives on the centre line. The one in your opponent's uh, deployment zone is worth four points to you and one point to them, and vice versa. And um, the two on the centre line are worth two points. And I took on Steve and his beautiful painted Blood Angel army. Very defensive, those um, tactical squads and rhinos, foot guns, two beautiful Leviathans, um, a couple of characters, two foot guns, mortars, quad mortars, and a special forge world. Vindicator tank, I think. And it was really, really beautiful. He actually got nominated for um, Best Painted Army. It's absolutely cracking. I'll pull some photos up here, hopefully. Beautiful army. And he's another northerner. He's from Newcastle, I think. So, brilliant. Um, really good block. And I've, I set up and he... Basically, I lost this game. I'll come out of it. I lost this game. I lost the game. And I set up. I set up badly. I hadn't. I thought I could outshoot him, so I set my knight further back, so I could shoot him. But all of my back cannons in range, so I had to move further forward first turn. I put my robots too far back, even though I should be advancing them. From sorry, and I played badly. I set up badly, and I played badly. I divvied again with my priest for another turn. My robots divvied again for a turn. What I should have done was set all my aggressive units on one flank and just charge straight across the board. First turn. Put some pressure on him. But I would not take this victory away from Stephen. I played badly and he played very good. Yeah, he knew his army, he knew how it worked. Um, he counted the few moves I ended up doing and he counted them well. Yeah, he was a really good player and he played really well. And I played really badly and basically crushed me. I think by turn four, I had down to one robot on one wound, but it was in the middle of his lines, surrounded by, I think, and it's just oh, one of those games. Um, so yeah, but still a beautiful army and really good bloke. Um, we had a chat later on, absolutely cracking. Um, and I was very happy for him where he got nominated for best painted army. Really, really good. Beautiful army. So, end of turn one, end of game one, and I'm down three losses for three games, and it's not going well. So, that was that day gone. We went to Bookman's again, had a beautiful meal. Um, highly recommend, if you ever get to Nottingham, just stay eat Bookman's, it's lovely. Went back to the hotel and prepared ourselves for day two. Okay, so day two, I've got up early. I'm psyched for day two, I'm going to get two victories here. Yeah, we gained my honour. We got to one world, first game, wrist victory. Brilliant, okay, this is first person to get ten. Um, to complete 10 objective cards for Millstone. I could do that, okay, be hard. And then the army I face, it was Andy from Nottingham himself. He actually um, works, games workshops, um, doing the dioramas, be seen the exhibitions and doing the tables. And he was an absolutely cracking bloke. And he had an absolutely beautiful army. And it consisted of two of the new baby knights and a Warhound Titan. First ever time I've took on a Warhound Titan, uh, ever. And first ever time I've took on Baby Knights, ever. And at this point, I was already on the second lowest table. And so was he. And his reason was because he'd lost every game. And my reason was because I'd lost every game. And, well, we, we started the game and I didn't hide no hopes of this game whatsoever. I took Warhound Titan. So... First turn, Andy draws advance, and he's got to get his victory point, so his whole army, this whole army's three models come rushing forward. The knights in the centre board, opens a fire my knight. It's Warhound, it's Titans in the centre board, opens a fire my knight, and takes half runes off him. Turns his other gun onto my robot, and does nothing. I think he did two runes or something. Um, the two baby knights did nothing, and at this point, he's about eight inches away from my knight. And I know I need to soak up his overwatch to kill it in combat. So, every moves forward. The knights, the robots, the priests. 
and the, my engine here will move forward, getting ready to charge. And he's got big heavy flame, massive, massive heavy flame. And it's strength 7, 46 hits, minus 4, something like that, and 4 damage. I'm thinking, if my robots charge that, that's them dead. And bad the best chance that I've got to kill him is. Um, I'd already shot it a lot, and it, Warhound Titans lose wounds so easily. I think it was down to 5 wounds, but it's still nasty. And if I had enough turn shooting, it's going to kill stuff. So, I charge my knight in. Warhound Titan turns. Opens up fire with his massive flamer and melts it. <laughs> just burnt my knight into molten steel. Just, so I didn't get in. So I charge my priests in and Andy fluffs his attacks. Even with the two massive guns he has, he only manages to kill seven of them. Which decimates the unit, but then three of them get into combat and tie him up. And the robots go in and... That's it, basically, then. Robots hit on fours, wound on threes, and he has no... I think he has six plus save. He only had five wounds left. Kill it, it doesn't blow up. And then he's got two robots left. Two of the little baby knights left. Um, they charge in, they kill a few robots, they kill the priests out. But then my infiltrators are able to swarm them. Um... My Tech Priest Dominus kills one of them with three shots from his Volkite Blaster, gets three sixes to wound, three mortal wounds, and he fails his save. Uh, and he fails all other saves from the shots. So he manages to bring one of the wounded knights down, and then the other knight is swarmed, he lasts a few turns, he's down to one wound, and my Warlord, with his Red Axe of Mars, charges in, gets a wound, and it's minus five, shops him dead. So yes, I had a victory. Yay! Um... It was a lot easier than I thought it would be, as off sounds. Um, and even Andy said, is the Warhound Titan is terrible in small games because you can concentrate everything on it. Bigger games, if you had another 1500 points worth of stuff there to take some firepower from it, it'd probably be a lot better. But in small games, you just concentrate everything. I mean, I'd ignore for two nights until that's dead. There's no point. If that's survived, it's going to kill me. So everything went at it, every shot, every pistol, everything that has pistols going in it. The Aiden in six to wound. But it's only got a few plus save. And it's exactly the same way you, kill you used to kill Terminators. Rate of fire. He'll, he'll fail saves. Um, but it was absolutely beautiful. Andy is a professional in this job. He paints the warm world. Um, and his night was gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. If you can see from pictures. Um, looks absolutely amazing. And it was really good fun to fight. Really good opponent. So I had a victory. Got one victory so far. If I can get one more victory... Have the next few games, have the next game, brilliant, I'll have two victories, three losses, that's not bad, for sure. So, let's go on to game five. Okay, game five, and it was dominate and destroy. Um, a turn of war mission, six objectives set up on the table, you get a point at the end of every turn for holding one and a point for killing every unit. Really good, I like this mission, it's really, really good. And I was taking Luke on from Nottingham, no. No, I wasn't. I was taking Luke on from Blackpool. Sorry. I'm looking at notes down here. Um, and he had an Admech army. And he was using Stitches 8 Dogma to infiltrate some... Um, inf to he was using Stigmas 8 dog Dogma to infiltrate some infiltrators. Which I questioned. But when he explained, it made sense because they weren't deep striking, so they infiltrated and he could move him first turn and get the charge. And he did it on his Tech Resendency as well, who had the Warlord, who had um, a Relic that allowed him to be all hits. And that came in handy when they wiped my priests off the board. Um, really good, very clever idea. Um, as well as that, as well as that unit which really hurt my army, he had the traditional um, Admech army listed, a free. Onga June Crawlers, two with Newton Lasers, one with the Icarus Ray, four um, shoot robots. I think he had three squads off ranges, each with sniper rifles. So, first time they killed my Warlord, and they just they killed a uh, robot as well. And then he had, I think, what else he had? Um, a couple of Technic um, NGCs and Dominuses to heal 
anything that got wounded. So even if I was taking a few wounds of him, he would just heal him back up the next turn. And that was it. And I had to walk forward because I had think I could hold three objectives, but he had the range, so he's just blown me away. If I'd sat still, he'd walk forward. It'd just, if I'd sat still, he'd just destroy me. So walked forward, and I think one robot got there and died. He didn't kill. I think missed all his attacks when he got into combat. Um, his army back to air shot him. So that was it. I was left on the last game, turn of the game. I had my knight on one wound. I had done some damage, but then got shot and died. So I was tabled again. So that's my third tabling in this tournament. Um, but it was a really good game. Luke was a really good player. Um, really nice, friendly, had a beautiful army. He'd done some amazing. Um, be sure there's some free handwork he'd done um, for his alphas and really, really good. Um, beautiful, like a dragon. Absolutely amazing. Um, really nice player. Lovely army. And it was a really fun game, even though I got destroyed. It's just where my arm went this weekend. So, that was it. I've got four losses, three tablings, and one win. Not the best result, but it sure. What I'll take away from this weekend is it showed I'd been so used to, and both Graham and Martin did well. Martin got three victories. Uh, Graham got one victory as well with his Orcs and as we, we, we talked about it, it showed how our armies have come we played each other too much in our meta um, in our gaming group we played each other's armies a bit too much we hadn't bur buried what we were fighting so our armies got really good at destroying each other my army uh, has very rarely been beaten in my gaming group but then it's really good against armies which attack. So Chaos Demons and Orcs, the attack, I shoot them, I then count charge, I win. And I've not faced many shooting armies recently. If I had, I'd realise how bad my army is at attacking itself. Um, so that was, I'd take that from this weekend. If I'm going to add more stuff to my ad mech, I will have to think how it works. I'll probably go back to Stygis 8. Um, Forge World, just so I can use the infiltration dogma on my either knights or either on robots or my priests. If I've done that, I might have won a few more games. The Wrath of Mars it didn't really come in much use this weekend. Um, a unit 10 infiltrators didn't really come in much use either. It was just too much. There was never any space to put them on, so they'd always have to be right on the edge. I failed every single charge of them. Um, I just didn't do much. I think two squads of five would have been better as I normally use. Um, just to give me more options. If I'd done those, I'd had the priests infiltrating, getting ready to charge turn one. It might have done better. But I've took that away and I'll probably move on to that in the future. Um, but I had a really good weekend. It was absolutely cracking. I fought five cracking Baroques and I fought five cracking armies. Um, really, really nice, beautiful armies. And what I'd like to say is, I've been there, both me, Martin and Graham, looked around, you, you, you look around the tables, and there was not one army there which looked particularly cheesy, or too strong. There were strong armies, don't get me wrong, there were some lovely strong armies, but that's all you want, you want a challenge, you want to be a player, but there was nothing there which you're thinking, oh, what are you doing mate, you've got like four Wraith Knights or something, there was no armies I saw there which were like that, they all looked like well-rounded strong but strong armies but support the back the background of the game and it was really really good really cracking event um i got two favorite game boards so that was really good i'm uh, glad i give people really good games um it's always fun to wipe an opponent out um but other than that yeah um three people like really liked my army as well for our favorite army votes so thank you guys if you're watching and Graham, Graham got five game, favorite game votes for, with his orcs, and so he got. I think he got the biggest boss award at the end of the event. So that was really, really good. Um, so I'll show you a picture here. He looks really happy.
that's it, it's just really grumpy normally. And that was it, yeah. It was a really, really good weekend. I'm sorry if I've rambled in this. It's been about half an hour. Apologise to you guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you are, if you are, live in England, Britain, get yourself to one of these events. They're absolutely cracking. I recommend them, yeah. Uh, just so good for... You see so much great hobby. You see so many great players. You see some beautiful armies. You'll, see, you'll have great games. You'll meet really cracking people, yeah. Um, in such a beautiful environment. The venue is lovely. Get yourself down. Find a hotel. Saying, go to the one reach state, the Highlands, what, bed and breakfast, or our normal one, the Ibis. There. Easy enough to get to the warm world, and you'll have a cracking time. So, yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. Sorry if it's just been me talking away um, in a few pictures. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you've been to any of these events and you like them or what do you think of the armies or what do you think of my army or did I just play badly. Um, till the next one, take care and keep on sixes.